Hey, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. Due to the holidays and NAB, both Aaron Stern's and my own production schedules are kind of tight, but I don't want to leave you high and dry. So over the next few weeks, I'll be doing some podcasts that are short, but that will hopefully show you something you didn't know and that you can use in the immediate. Okay, so I'm sure that this has happened to you. Some evil genius mad scientist guy comes to you and tells you that he's trying to take over the world and that he wants to make a commercial announcing his domination over the planet. You're going to get major exposure. This will be broadcast over every frequency used on the planet. It's a good job opportunity to say the least. I mean, you know what I'm talking about, right? Or has that only happened to me? Anyway, so this evil dude wants you to make an animation where the logo blurs in, and of course you see the logo and, well, <laughs> it sucks, but you're not going to tell him that because then he'll use his mind ray on you, and trust me, uh, speaking from experience, not so fun. Besides, the client is paying, or at least promises you your own Pixar-sized animation studio in the New World Order, so you're just going to keep your mouth shut if you're smart. But here's the thing. You bring the logo into After Effects only to realize that the bounds of the logo are too small for the actual composition. So if I were to add, let's say, an effect like, let's choose Effect, Blur and Sharpen, CC Radial Fast Blur, as you can see, when I blur it out, it kind of doesn't go past the boundaries, right? It, it sticks to the edges, but after that, it doesn't really work. Now, you could explain to your evil boss that this is his own fault and not yours, and if he had just asked you what size you needed the logo at, this would never have happened. But you probably won't because your animation desk is suspended over a giant shark tank, naturally. And yeah, you're not shark bait yet because you can do a few things here. You can go back into the original image in Photoshop and give it a bigger canvas size. Or you can pre-compose the layer and add the effects onto the nested composition as I covered in my tutorial on nesting and pre-composing. Or you can use an often ignored effect called Grow Bounds, which we'll take a look at right now. So with my logo layer selected, I'll choose Effect, Utility, Grow Bounds. And then I'll take the Grow Bounds effect and I'll move it above the CC Radial Fast Blur so that the effect happens before the blur. And then I will expand the number of pixels until it fills the screen. Essentially, expanding the boundaries of the image. So, in essence, this effect is used to make the image behave as if it were on a larger canvas in Photoshop, or more properly, that it had larger dimensions than it actually does. So while you can nest and pre-compose for a similar result, this allows you to skip that step, which means that if you are animating this layer in some way, you could do your animation directly in this composition and not have to move between two comps, which is always nice. And even if your boss is not some evil genius bent on world domination and is just the normal kind of client who might still be kind of evil, hopefully this will come in handy. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net unless the New World Order has taken over, and then this is Aaron Rabinowitz for the New World Order. Please help me.